Yeah, that's right. It's a pink cup. <clears throat> I wanted to do a short video talking about vampirism. And it's come up a lot in my conversations and in my work because um, it is something that I experience and experienced when I was younger a lot more, actually, and a lot less now. But, and I'm not, and this is going to be a little bit touchy because my experience with it is my own experience. And um, there's people who are better authorities on it as a whole, or more famous authorities, or more respected authorities on the subject. And I am not going to, in any way, shape or form, um, go into a situation where I'm in contention with people about what they believe this is. I'm going to just talk to you about it from my personal experience and perspective. From my personal experience and, and, and perspective, vampirism is more of a verb than it is a noun. Um, vampirism is something that you do. It is not necessarily something that you are. Um, it doesn't mean you can't be. I mean, I think that, you know, after a while you can sort of um, see yourself this way. Um, but to call yourself a vampire, okay, I think a lot of this is, you know, just pop culture gone amok and, and has created an egregoric or egregoric um, fact for a lot of people. Of course, there's so much pop culture influence. Everybody wants to be a vampire. At least they did when I was younger. You know, just before the zombie craze, it was vampires. And it was vampires from like, you know, from Interview with the Vampire right up until... I don't know, the early millennium and Twilight killed it for most of us who were actually really into it. Um, anyway, so everybody wanted to be like a vampire. And so suddenly you saw this explosion of vampires. Suddenly everybody's a fucking vampire. And, and I fell into that category too. I got wrapped up in the, in the imagery and the personality of it. And it was fun for a little while. It was definitely a lifestyle and a role-playing activity. But not only that, I did actually practice it and part of my magic was absolutely found uh, fundamentally forged upon the subject of vampirism. Vampirism can come in many different flavors. It can come in psi vampirism, emotional vampirism, which is an offshoot of that, um, sanguinarian vampirism. And when I was experiencing this in the 90s, you know, there was, there was um, a lot of websites to this. I think it was Sanguinarius was one of the websites I used to go to. It was some woman who ran this, uh, this site, and it was uh, a site for the community of, of various vampire-oriented people. And there was a lot of interesting information. Some of it was very occult-oriented and very useful, in fact. Um, but at the time that I used to be involved in this current, um, what I found was that the prevailing wisdom of the majority of people I had had time to really work with was that vampirism ultimately is an energetic um, whether you want to call it an affliction or a verb, like an activity. And it has really nothing to do with blood in a biological sense. The blood that is used by sanguinarious vampires, they don't, um, you know, I'm sure there's going to be people who disagree with this and they're going to give me hate mail, but in my experience, it had nothing to do with biological blood as a necessity. It wasn't like in the movies where if they don't get blood, they get sick and die. Um... And obviously all of the things in the movies about being out in the sun and all this other stuff killing you, um, you know, or garlic or crosses, all of that is, is just Hollywood, obviously. That doesn't mean that there isn't something to it, but we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. So vampirism is, according to my experience of it in the past, it is the sometimes um, symbiotic but mostly parasitic exchange of energy from one to another. And this can be done uh, voluntarily, it can be done subconsciously, um, and it is not, you know, necessarily an affliction. You have an affliction that might be an energetic imbalance in your body, or a flaw, or maybe you are being leached on by other spirits, and you need this psychic energy, this prana, this chi, this whatever it is, whatever word you want to give it, this life force, um, you need this to balance out your energies. And so... There's a lot of ways you can get it. There was, there was vampires who got their energy just from doing martial arts and dance and all this other stuff. Um, you know, they needed a source of energy outside themselves. That's what it ultimately boiled down to for a lot of these people. And so they would go around and they would do their thing and they would drain energy from people, sometimes consciously or unconsciously. But that's not what makes you a vampire. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this is an energy imbalance state that, that can be happening to you either because of something in your astral 
you know, your spiritual self that could be based upon maybe abuse, trauma, um, something like that. I don't really believe that it's genetic. I have never really seen any proof or evidence of that. The only evidence I see of that can be more easily attributed to psychological or physical abuse when you're a child by a crazy parent who displayed these signs of vampirism as well. Um, but vampirism is a verb. The vampire, the vampire is a verb. This is a thing you do. It's not a thing you are. And I'm going to get hate mail for that. This is just my perspective. And if people disagree with me on that, that's fine. Um, you can have an energy imbalance and not correct it with vampirism. There's a lot of people um, who, as they began their path in the current of vampirism, they cured themselves, quite literally, by doing various energy work. They just worked with their energy form and were able to figure out what was causing it and fix the problem. It's really that simple. This is not an affliction that's like a lifelong disease. Uh, for I've never met one that I felt, you know, with my sensitivity, especially doing what I did, I never felt anybody that, that, that couldn't, you know, be balanced if they wanted to be. Um, and I'm going to get hate mail for that too, because this is a pop culture subject. Anything pop culture and magic, that has got a huge following. You're going to get people who are going to, going to disagree and that's fine. Um, so when I'm saying these things like it can't, it's not, this is in my experience. If you have a completely different experience, go ahead and correct me in the comments. I'm not trying to be rude to you. So forgive me if I sound that way. Um, now in my experience with this, I was predominantly a psi vampire at the time I believed. And so I would go around manipulating people for energy. And that was part of the cult that I was working through. Um, but of course I became aware very quickly that that's not, it wasn't for me. It was because I had spiritual entities draining me. They were feeding off of my emotion, my fear, my anger, and just, they had, you know, most of my chakras completely embedded with their, their feeding you know, methods. And so I was constantly having to do things to cause drama or whatever emotion I needed to fill this void that they were draining for me. And of course they would create situations and I would work with them to create situations where they would feed off of others. So it was uh, long story short, I don't like talking about this in much detail because it's, it's personal obviously, but in this experience, I, I was acting the role of a vampire and it actually became something that became intense enough for me where I really did like to get blood when I could get it. Um, but it didn't happen very often. And when it did, it wasn't something I had to eat, you know, and in my experiences, I found out both through studying it and through just experiences that sanguinarius vampires are not really any different than a psi vampire, except they need a more physical connection to the source of the energy that they want. Some of them that I had encountered could were literally just psi vampires that just had to touch you and they could drain energy from you. Some um, needed blood, and this blood, if you are an advanced enough occultist or you work in the same blood current that I use, blood is not actually filled with energy, okay? It's not like a drop of blood has a whole shit ton of energy because most of these sanguinarius vampires, they don't suck a lot of energy down. They don't suck a lot of blood. They take a drop. You know, they, they, uh, uh, um, someone who's going to give them blood will literally give them a few drops of their blood and that's enough. And they don't even often take it from the skin anymore. A lot of these people are very, you know, a little, little timid. And I don't blame them if it's a stranger because blood can carry diseases. You know, you got cuts in your mouth and they've got, you know, blood exposed you know, you're, you're opening yourself to some interesting experiences, which I never wanted to have. So I was always very careful, but, um, the, the blood itself contains some energy. It is linked to your body. It is linked to your astral form There's living things in it. So of course it's got energy in it, but this isn't really how it works. This blood is a conduit to the person who donated it or gave it, or it was taken from. It's a conduit through which their energy can be accessed more strongly than just touching their skin because you have to understand your outside body has its own barriers set up and it has its own ways of preventing you from getting into someone else's energy body. I'm not saying you can't do it because there's definitely ways to do so, but it's harder to do through touching the skin than it is touching their blood. And um, sometimes it's other fluid and sometimes there's other different ways, but the blood makes it a lot easier. And if you are, you know, in this current, you may not be aware or able, uh, you can actually have, you know, enough defenses built up that your, that your astral body is kind of hardened and you, and you can have a hard time getting 
the energy to permeate through just whatever part of your body is in contact with things. And so a lot of these people had what I call psychic mouths, their energy mouths. They're almost like your chakras, but they're, they're vampiric chakras. And, the, and what they would do is, you know, for me, they were on the, the palms of my hands. And it, what I would do is I preferred to touch people with the palms of my hands. And I experimented with it in my mouth, and it didn't, it didn't do much. And swallowing blood didn't really do it for me. And um, it was more like, you know, if someone was bleeding like somebody got hurt, I would often run over. I was the first one to try to help them. Like, oh, you're going to be fine. <laughs> you know, I was always that guy. I wasn't afraid of your blood. I, I was like, yeah, blood, this is cool. Um, it, because it was just, you know, just the shock of it. Seeing it even would, in, would inspire my own energy. Because if you see blood, a lot of the times uh, people have a, a natural response to get elevated, you know, emotions for, just for biological reasons, you know, uh, anxiety. So... For me, it was in my hands, but for a lot of these others, it's it's in their throats, in their stomachs, in their mouth. Um, their 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 psychic, their spiritual mouth is their mouth, and so they would, you know, they'd have to ingest this to get the connection, the firm connection that they needed, this this intake connection that they needed. As I developed more in my own ability to work with energy, I didn't need this anymore, and I became more adapted and more balanced and my energy systems got more balanced. And once I stopped working with these entities that were draining me, I had virtually no need to use that kind of, uh, that kind of thing anymore. And so I kind of left that behind a little bit, but retained the abilities and the understanding of it. So I can still, you know, I still sometimes do just for fun to, to enervate myself. Um, I will sometimes do some of those practices. Um, Usually for me, um, it, it involved a lot of emotion. I used to like invoking emotions in people. Occasionally you will see me doing this, like on the Dark Sorcery channel or the Dark Sorcery group. If we get like a troll or something, sometimes I will engage that troll wholeheartedly and I will just relentlessly, relentlessly piss them off. I had one the other night that I was arguing with and he became a troll about our disagreement. And so I just kept laying into him and I started getting private messages from him and I knew I had him. I just enjoyed it and I blocked him and I just let him stew and I could feel it even from here and it made me feel really good um, maybe I'm just sadistic I don't know you can be the judge of that um, but at the end of the day this is my experience of it and of course it's going to vary I keep saying this but it's, I really want to make sure you guys understand that so <clears throat> when we're having this vampiric experience usually what's happening is um, if it's if it's at all um, consensual, there's actually a symbiotic exchange going on. Um, it almost always means that the donor is coming out with a little bit less. So I guess you could still say it's parasitic, but they usually get something in return. They get a cathartic experience because a lot of the times, you know, the energy that this vampiric person wants, this unbalanced person wants. Um, isn't necessarily good energy. It's it's sometimes it's a negative energy because they have. You'll notice that a lot of them can be very emotional and very unbalanced emotionally, and they will express themselves with unbalanced emotions because they're trying to cause negativity in others. They're actually trying to absorb a negative energy for whatever reason. You know, people often think, "Oh, you don't want negative energy. You want all good energy." That's that's utter bullshit. Anybody who who works with energy really understands that you need yin and yang together in a balanced way. Without, with too much of one, you get an imbalance, and that's very unhealthy, and it can actually make you sick. So a lot of the times, uh, the, the ones who were the dark and edgy vampires and the ones who were emo and really emotional and were really causing drama, the narcissistic ones, they're actually imbalanced with yang energy, if you want to look at it from that perspective. They're actually too energized, and they're actually trying to pull in, and I shouldn't say too energized, they're too energized with yang energy because it yin energy is energy as well they need yin energy they need more of that receptive energy rather than that that toxic you know blasting light energy that's sometimes toxic to people so this is usually what would happen and they would be they want to pull this 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 yin energy this negativity in to fill this hole in them because it it validates their energy experience i guess you could say um, for others, it's not. For others, it's literally they just need excitement or energy or just, you know, yang energy. That's also possible. That's why you could have certain vampires that would feed better by going to a concert. You know, they go to a concert where the energy is really raised. 
and they'd go in all mopey and they go in and in a few minutes they're like <laughs> and they feel good because they're sucking off of this this group energy that's that's yang energy um others of course were sexual you know you, and this is this leads to succubus and incubi you know succubus and incubi um long story short because i haven't really done a lot of work with them i'm familiar with them spirits have been telling me things about them um they're vampiric organisms as well, or spiritual organisms, that gain their energetic sustenance from the uh, sacral and root, you know, style energy. This this procreative energy that comes from you, uh, your sexual urges and desires, and they can actually manifest in a beneficial way. They can actually manifest as just healthy libido, but a lot of the times, um, just like you know, what we would consider a, like a vampire narcissistic jerk that's, that's causing a lot, they're into the negative side of this energy um, because they have too much of this positive form. This is one of the reasons why they're so damn attractive because they're so overflowing with this yang sexuality that they just come on to you and they're like, yeah, fuck this shit out of me, blah, 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 blah. And they have this energy pattern to them that if that's what you're into, you're going to be into it, you know? Um, they're going to appear to you in whatever form is really going to attract you because they're trying to suck this negative sexual energy out of you. This, you know, a lot of times people who have had experiences with them almost always have some form of either regret or maybe cautionary att attitude about them or are afraid of them. And, and, and uh, a lot of the time it's not because they got hurt by the spirit. It's actually more because of what it made them do. You know, it made, it made them see a side of themselves they didn't like. Like, oh, you know, I, so I, I never liked this before, but now I have to watch scat porn or something. You know, crazy shit like that. I, the few handful of people I've spoken to that have had this experience, this is, this is what they recount for me. Um, so again, that doesn't mean it has to be a negative experience. If you were interested in, you know, working with succubi or incubi, I believe you could very easily look through, if you're going to use goetic magic, look for an entity that gives good familiars and see if uh, there's one aligned with, with love in some way. Um, but any spirit that gives good familiars, you get a good chance because, you know, that's, you know, familiars aren't just like little impy things. Familiars can be all sorts of things from little impy things to little spirits to, you know, powerful, uh, you know, uh, you know, gin, anything can be a familiar, even a demon, you know, a lesser demon can easily be a familiar. So that includes succubi, that includes, you know, probably things like hellhounds, whatever you want to envision, that's, that's within the wheelhouse of a familiar. So um, you could theoretically get the favor of one and be in control of it. Um, it's definitely possible. So maybe at some point I'll do a longer video about familiars and we'll have this conversation. Uh, which I do know something about more than, than succubi or incubi, because I have one. Um, all right, so going back to the, to the vampire thing, and we're going we're gonna to cut this off in a minute. Um, when we are talking about vampires, then I believe, personally, we're talking about an, uh, a verb. It's a, it's a vampiric activity that can become a way of life, and, and this makes you a vampire, okay? I, I will, I'll put it that way. Um, and again, there's going to be people who are very well respected, who are going to disagree with me. They're going to say that this is a thing you can be born into. Um, and they're going to probably also say that there are physical things that happen to your body because of it. And I'm going to agree with you because when I was living in this current and I had this happening to me because these spirits were draining me, I did have physical effects. Um, there were certain things that I couldn't tolerate the same way I could before. Uh, or as much. And when this stopped, I became more tolerant of. Uh, one of those things was I had a lot of indigestion a lot of the times. And this could, of course, just be from the emotional trauma that I was always going through. But I had a lot of indigestion and certain food I couldn't really take. Um, I eventually, even after working, even after getting rid of this, I guess I still had this imbalance. And it took me a long time to cure this in my own life um, to the point where I barely get indigestion anymore at all. I used to, have to take Prilosec like every day. I eventually switched, so I was using baking soda. And now I barely need anything. I've, I've, you know, if most of my life I've had like constant heartburn. Now I don't have it anymore. Um, that may be neither. That may not be relevant. That's kind of anecdotal, but it's something to consider. That's one of the things that I used to hear a lot back in the '90s and early millennium when I was really researching this. That was a common complaint. It was a form of indigestion, especially when eating certain things. Some people it was like, I think it was like lettuce and uh, uh, cabbages and things like that would give it to them, which makes sense. You can be allergic to those things and get an indigestion from them. So, uh, obviously, there's the sunlight issue, and I know from experience that sunlight used to bother me. It really, and it still does to a lesser extent, but it really, I mean, I couldn't 
be out in it for more than a little bit before I would get sunburned and just feel like, bleh, especially in the warm weather. And after a while, working outside at my day job and having broken of this current, now I find I need a little sunlight actually every day. Um, otherwise, I can lose vitamin D and I get feeling lethargic and crappy. So um, I've had a complete reversal there. It used to be when I'd see the sunlight, it would make me lethargic and feel crappy. Now it's like completely the opposite. You know, I'm still nocturnal. I think I still have whatever that is that makes you nocturnal. I don't think that's necessarily a vampirism. I think that's just a you know, quirk of, of biology and spirituality maybe, but vampirism doesn't make you necessarily nocturnal. I've known some very day, you know, diurnal vampires in my time. Uh, you know, this, this is not, you know what I'm saying? This is why I have a little bit of trouble sometimes with the definition of it because it goes all over the place. Okay. Um, everybody's experience of it is so different that it's almost like, let's not be so specific about it. Let's not call it this necessarily. I think, in fact, the word bothers me for different reasons, but for the same reason that like ninja bothers me, it conjures up these, these images of pop culture and not the reality of it. And this influences the occult practice of it to a huge negative degree. Um, and it's not because I'm judging people who want to live that lifestyle. I still enjoy that lifestyle a little bit. I love the visuals. I love watching the movies. I love role-playing this in video games and stuff. I love it. It's fucking awesome. But from an occultist perspective, I have to draw a line and say, this is what it is, and this is the game that, you, that people put around it to make it more fun. Um, just like with demonolatry and demonology, there's one part of it that is like correct historical and verifiable and then there's the, the the mystique around it like like my friend Waylon's always saying you know we shouldn't call them demons they are actually former gods that have been demonized and i agree with that but i do enjoy the edgy nomenclature of calling them demons it makes me feel interesting and empowered when i do it it makes me feel edgy so i still call them demons and they don't mind because they know i'm doing it with respect um but i'll also call them spirits and gods too so it's it's not like i'm not aware of the the correction um, so what else? Uh, there was a bunch of other things. Obviously garlic and crosses don't necessarily do anything. Um, crosses could in a sense that, uh, you know, you could have an energy imbalance that's based around your religion, I suppose, that could have been because of a religion. And when you encounter strong religious people with strong faith, it can, it can mess with you. But that's, that's not a vampiric trait. I think anybody that can have that experience. So, um, what about inheriting it? Can, can you inherit it? I mean, again, I don't think so. I don't think this is something that because your mother had it, you're going to have it. And I, I don't think it works that way. Can you transfer it to someone else? Mm, yes. Uh, yeah, you can. If it, but not, not like with a dark gift, like, Oh, you're a vampire now. No, 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 no. It's sharing, exchanging energy doesn't make you a vampire in this sense. Um, it is not an infection. It is not a virus. It is not a thing that spreads like that. You can make someone vampiric by vampirizing them, by vampirizing them enough to the point where they are energy deficient. And if you continue to do this long enough, you can actually create a permanent energetic hole in them. You can create an energetic flaw. So this is why people who come from an abusive life um, or from parents that might have this trait that is unchecked can inherit, not through familial line, but through experiential and environmental, can inherit the vampiric trait. Um, so to put it, to, to summarize it, if I wanted to make you a vampire, okay, I would convince you that I'm some powerful vampire lord and that if you do everything I tell you, I will give you my dark gift and I will share with you this beautiful, tr and you'll suddenly have all these powers and these abilities and blah, 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 and I'm going to manipulate you and I'm going to scare you and I'm going to give you emotional trauma and I'm going to just suck and I'm going to feed and I'm going to get you to the point where you're willing to give me blood and to do whatever I want. This is the kind of stuff I used to do. I would get you to do all these things for me and I would just promise and you'd start feeling it because I'm draining you all the time. You'd start feeling this hunger. You'd start feeling this need and you would start reciprocating and you'd start doing these things to other people a little bit. You'd dress the part. You'd act the part. You'd, you'd suddenly become so dramatic. You, you, but you didn't know what you were doing. So a lot of times you just stayed hungry and that gave me more, of course, because now you're even more stressed out. So of course now I have to give you 
what I can to feed you as well. And it just becomes this, this weird, sick, you know, mind game that you can play with one another. That if I wanted to do that to you, I could do that to you long enough. I could cause damage to your psychic energy body potentially. And this could set you up or I could even attach through magic, a permanent, um, feeding attachment in the astral world. There are some spirits that can teach you to do this. Um, I'm not going to recommend any at the moment, um, because, uh, I'd rather get their permission to talk about it before I tell you. Um, and they may not give me that permission because they might want to keep that for what they work for. Um, but you can definitely do magic to cause this. You can be a totally normally functioning personing with personing, normally functioning person with, with no need to do this, no energy imbalance whatsoever. And you can use vampiric activity magic to drain energy from others. If you really want to know the truth, um, you do this more often than you realize, you know, when you're doing when you're doing kundalini, when you're raising your energy, when you're doing this, the energy is coming in from the universe and, and filling you up and all this other stuff. Well, I mean, that's kind of vampiric, right? You're drawing in energy from some other source, right? And what are you giving back? You know, uh, are you giving back anything? Uh, what are you doing with it? Um, when you say charge like a crystal, you know, and you're charging it like a battery and you want to withdraw that energy later. Well, that's, you know, that's a vampiric act as well. So, this is, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm being too pedantic, but this is, this is the way you need to think about it. Well, anyway, guys, this was a long video, but I hope you guys got something out of it. Again, I'm going to say it one more time because I'm trying to be respectful to you. If your vision and understanding of the vampire is different or if I'm insulting you in any way, take a breath. This is just my experience with it. And I've been doing this for a very long time. If my experience does not match yours, that doesn't mean you are wrong. And it doesn't mean I am wrong. It just means this is my experience and this is yours. Anyway, guys, uh, please subscribe to this channel and to the Dark Sorcerer YouTube channel. And uh, I will try to be releasing a video once a week uh, as often as I can. Uh, I'm in my busy season right now. So of course my ability to make videos is limited. So I'm kind of shooting a couple at a time and releasing them, spreading them out a little bit. So I hope you got something out of this and uh, we'll check you again soon.